At the end of a five-day trip from England, the Queen Elizabeth, world's largest ocean liner, pulls into New York Harbor. Aboard are almost 15,000 happy GIs, most of them men of the 8th Air Force, jamming every square inch of deck space for a look at the USA. These are the guys who helped win it for us against the Nazis, and the entire nation welcomes them home. As America's veterans returned, they got back to doing the things they enjoyed before the war. From the Maine woods to the Midwestern cornfields, the ranks of sportsmen in the U.S. surged when America's greatest generation was introducing America's largest generation to the joys of spending time afield. Still today, passing on our hunting traditions from one generation to the next continues as a key pathway of introducing newcomers to our sports. But it has been some time since we could rely on dads and Uncle Joes to alone build our future. To grow our ranks and sustain our traditions, we must be fully engaged. We must use all the traditional tools and new technology available to expand hunting and shooting opportunities and to ensure that our firearm freedoms remain strong for both today's and tomorrow's firearm owners. And make no mistake about it, in these efforts we must step boldly forward, whether in the field, the halls of Congress, or at the range. Time was all Dad needed was a box of clay targets and a place on the back 40 to provide his youngsters with their first opportunity to pull the trigger. But today that's not always the case. There are many, both young and old, who want to get started in shooting but don't know where to go. That's why the National Shooting Sports Foundation put out a big welcome mat with our first shots program. The program offers free seminars, including classroom instruction coupled with live fire training under the guidance of qualified instructors. Well, it's almost as good as having dad stand behind your shoulder. In 2011, more than 5,000 newcomers took their first shots, and many of them are now active shooters and loyal customers at the club where they were first introduced. <laughs> Today, NSSF's more than 175 partner ranges have become ongoing recruitment centers, helping breathe new life into an old tradition. There was a time when scholastic shooting programs were commonplace at America's high schools and colleges. Back then, it was easy for any student who was interested in shooting to simply sign up, get started. But today, that's not always the case. After flourishing for more than 100 years, the Harvard Shooting Club disbanded in 2003. Now, thanks to our collegiate grant program, the club has sprung to life again, and in a big way. The National Shooting Sports Foundation has been integral for our development and growth, giving us $7,500 uh, for a grant that brings us from basically non-existent on Harvard campus to a huge presence where everyone is basically talking about it. help of the grant, we were able to get a lot of people interested in shooting sports, understanding that uh, guns can be used safely and in a fun manner. During the past two years alone, the NSSF's Collegiate Grant Initiative has helped establish new shooting clubs and expand existing programs at more than 40 colleges and universities. Freshman beanies may no longer be seen on campuses, but shooting vests are sure back in style at schools across the country. Time was when hunters and shooters were part of a tight-knit circle of family and friends that helped keep everyone involved and active from one season to the next. But today, that's not always the case. Without a strong social network of fellow enthusiasts, many of our customers are losing their connection to our sports. Instead of being used, their guns are gathering dust. 
To help reverse this trend, the NSSF has created a new style video newsletter that, thanks to our partnership with GunBroker.com, is emailed to almost one million firearm owners each month. Chock full of hunting and shooting tips as well as where to and how to information, Pull the Trigger now serves as an electronic touch point to encourage new and renewed participation. It's kind of like your best shooting buddies giving you a call. Hi, I'm Gil Ash of OSP Shooting School. Hi, I'm Doug Canning, professional shooter. Hi, I'm Charlie McNeese, range master at Gunsight. Hi, I'm Scott Linden, and this is my dog, Buddy. In fact, in a recent reader survey, 87% of respondents said they were encouraged to head a field or to the range. Now that you know how to become more consistent, you need to go to your local range and practice a little bit. For many years, the word traditional far better described our customer base than new or different. But today, it's not always the case. In recent years, the extraordinary popularity of modern sporting rifles has not only changed the firearms that millions of our customers use, but also the sports in which they compete. And putting those changes into perspective has been a key effort of the NSSF. We began with a campaign to help create a better understanding of the evolution of the modern sporting rifle. And we are now highlighting those shooting events that are changing the face of shooting sports across America. I think three-gun shooting is a phenomenal opportunity for, uh, for the shooting sports. As we've seen, we've seen a lot of young people coming in who want to shoot the AR-15 type guns. They, they love the tactical handguns. They love that tactical shotgun. And so it's really heartening to see NSSF getting involved and demonstrate to all of the shooters that the National Shooting Sports Foundation is an organization for the shooters and for the shooting sports in America. For many years, most elected officials were also active sportsmen and strong supporters of our Second Amendment. But today that's not always the case. And that's why it's more important than ever for industry to have an active voice in our nation's capital and state houses. If we don't tell our story, and if we don't fight for our freedoms, who will? In Washington, D.C., a critical part of this effort to protect our industry is the NSSF PAC. This nonpartisan federal political action committee supports pro-industry, pro-Second Amendment, and pro-sportsman candidates running for election. Ken, thank you very much for what you do. And thank you in particular for your support of me. Uh, this is important to the future uh, of our country, that we, we remain strong, committed, and we have a strong gun and shooting industry uh, in our country. Thank you so very much. Bringing together dozens of industry leaders, our annual fly-in to Washington, D.C. ensures that our industry's voice is being heard in Congress. The National Shooting Sports Foundation does a wonderful job in putting this fly-in together so that we can protect the very industry that we love and that we're all involved with. This year's event helped spark the introduction of the Hunting, Fishing, and Recreational Shooting Sports Protection Act. That's why I'm pleased to announce today that Congressman Miller and I will soon be introducing legislation known as the Hunting, Fishing, and Recreational Shooting Protection Act. This important piece of legislation will help stop anti-sporting regulations that would devastate the firearms, ammunition, and sport fishing tackle industries. At the state level, NSSF's government relation team helped mobilize industry and gun owners alike to defeat micro-stamping bills in three states and magazine ban legislation in half a dozen states. A strong and unified industry voice does make a difference. You know, time was that, well, time was that we had more time. Time to enjoy family, friends, and the great outdoors, but today, it's not always the case. American families are working harder and longer than ever before. That's why the NSSF joined with leading sportsmen and conservation groups to form the Sunday Hunting Coalition, 
so we can help open the door to more time afield for America's busy families. It's a tough challenge to change entrenched blue laws, but we are making progress. Sunday hunting bills have been introduced in Virginia and Pennsylvania. Together with our partners, NSSF is committed to helping families in these restrictive states find more time to hunt. Time was, finding a place to hunt or shoot was no more difficult than heading out of town and knocking on a farmhouse door. But today, that's not always the case. With lack of opportunity and access, the leading barriers of hunting and shooting participation, the NSSF is working with those best capable of creating new places to go and removing obstacles to getting out. America's state wildlife agencies. Nebraska's done a number of things, making it as easy as possible uh, to get kids out in the field. Remove the minimum age for turkey hunting. We lowered the minimum age for deer hunting. And of course, one of the biggest uh, efforts was reducing the price of uh, big game or, or deer permits for youth and the price of our turkey permits for youth. A 50% increase in one year. Uh, that's significant. In recent years, our grants to state agencies have created many of the most innovative and successful recruitment and retention efforts in America. Helping tomorrow's hunters get started and keeping today's hunters in the field. The nation our World War II veterans returned to is still full of family farms in Mayberry-like rural communities. Now, we all know that's no longer the case. With your support, the NSSF has worked to understand the changes that have impacted our industry, our customers, and our freedoms. Together, we have met the challenges these changes have created, and together, we will make the most of the opportunities these changes present. And with your continued support, well, that will always be the case.